work stuff, but they'll do that as well. All right, so uh, remember, all the missing work is going to be due the 12th. You should be good unless you get behind this week. All right, so we're going to go to the bell ringer. All right, so we're starting a new unit, atomic structure. So here's a copy of periodic table, and we'll give you one to hang on to. And then we're going to do the bell ringer. So this is Maya. She left here. Here's one for you. All right, so we're going to click on Submit Assignment. I'm going to sit down here. And three things you know about the atom or atomic uh, structure. Have you, or periodic table. Do you know uh, anything I, about those? I didn't pay attention. You didn't pay attention. No, no that's the only Learn more about the last thing we All right, what, um, this is a periodic table. What do you think you find on the periodic table? Atoms. Huh? Atoms. Ah, atoms. Atoms make up another word that starts with an E. Elements. Elements. So we can say atoms. Whoops. Well, it's hot today. Atoms. Atoms make up elements. Elements are found on the periodic table. Do you know the parts of an atom? Nope. Um, scientists use the periodic table. Oh, yeah. You can say scientists use the periodic table. Let's see. From our unit on mixtures, we said elements combine together to make what? Start with a C. Compounds. I mean, I've got more than three up there. You just needed three just to get your ideas of um, what you already know. Submit that. Now, if you want to type your notes, you want to write them. Okay. Type them. Okay. So then we're going to go into. You want the heat on, or are you comfortable? Good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go here to our atomic structure notes. And I'm going to start this. Why does it not I don't think much. I need like four times the number plus. I need to message Cammy people and see what they say. All right, so we are going to start our study of the periodic table and elements and atoms and how they react with one another. And we've got all that new products. So we have to start off first by understanding what the periodic table is and how we can get information off of the periodic table. And so in class, here's our periodic table that we might refer to. Notice that it's not shaded in the background like this one, but we do have little colored boxes around it that mean different things up here. Um, yours that I've given you a copy of is just black and white, so it doesn't have a lot of the other information on it that you might see up here. So for this one, we can tell that if it is colored in blue, it's going to be a metal. If it's colored in yellow, it's a metalloid. And if it's colored in purple, it is a non-metal. Here we also know that the symbol, if it's black, it's a solid. If it's red, it's a liquid. And if it's white, it is a gas. Um, so different periodic tables have different little keys that let you know what's going on. Um, on there. Yeah, so NA, which is sodium, is a solid. 
hydrogen's a gas and it's a non-metal, even though it's over here. It's the long purple one over here. So we're going to learn about all of this. So we have to understand a little bit about atoms first. So that's what we're going to do first. So here's sort of a drawing of an atom. And it is the smallest particle of an element and that still has the properties of that element. So uh, atom is kind of like a building block of matter. Um, and the element is the simplest form smallest. of matter. And nice. here's an example, water. Water's not an atom, but it's actually made up of atoms. It's made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So as we go through our unit, um, this unit and a couple others, we're going to be um, understanding, have a better understanding of what these chemical symbols mean. And this is uh, one idea of what an atom may look like in my image there. Um, the discovery of the atomic structure, we start back at 400 BC. There was a philosopher named Dalton or Democritus. And he actually came up with the name Adam. He thought if you took matter and you kept cutting it into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces, eventually you would get to nothing but the atom. And so he was Greek, and so the word comes from Atmos, and so that's how we get the word Adam. Well, people pretty much um, left that idea alone for thousands of years until about 1803. John Dalton um, was studying and he decided that an atom has to be spherical in shape and solid. So the smaller, and you can't get any smaller, so it was not divisible at all. So there's nothing smaller than an atom. Now, we did make two statements that still are fairly true today. He did say that elements are made up of the same type of atom, the same atom, and have the same mass, and compounds will be atoms of different elements combined. And so those two are kind of um, still what we um, believe today, but his first item there about what the atom is has changed over time. Now, uh, notice there were quite a few years, about 67 years passed, and Dmitry Mendeleev came along, and they had this, scientists had discovered lots of different elements, and it was we, they needed a way to organize these elements. So uh, Mendeleev noticed some patterns that would occur when he arranged all the elements by atomic mass, and so he was the first to create a periodic table to see where to be able to locate um, elements based on some properties. So we're going to see that what we have today really isn't, um, he was sort of the stepping stone to get to what we have today. Mm -hmm. So in 1904, J.J. Thompson, he was English and he came up with the plum pudding model. In England, they have this dessert or this food, this, uh, like a pudding with chunks of plum in it. And so he said that the atom actually was divisible, that the pudding part was still spherical in shape, but was positively charged, and it had clumps of negative particles uh, spread out through it. Mm -hmm. And um, so people kind of went along with his idea, but notice in about six years, our Ernest Rutherford came along and he actually discovered the nucleus. So this is called the nuclear model. He did a golden ball experiment. And so pretty much he said, if I send negatively charged particles through this, if it's as J.J. Thompson says, then all these particles will go straight through. Um, 
But what he found when he shot negative particles, electrons, through a gold foil, which is very thin, he would get some particles that would bounce off. And so he knew there was a positive place in, in atoms, and this mass did have a negative charge because it repelled the negative charge, so it was positive. And then the negative particles were mm. kind of around it. Mm. And so he's the one who said there's a positively charged nucleus mm. for the atom. Positivity charged particle is positively charged particle where the nucleus with a low mass negative charged particle surrounding it. Nucleus is low mass. Um, negativity. Negatively charged particles surrounding. So that was in 1911. Then there, in 1913, came Henry Mosley. And he actually discovered uh, that protons determine each element. So protons are unique for each element. They are the atomic number. And he decided to arrange the atomic, the periodic table by atomic number. And so that's how we do it today. The numbers in the top of each box is the atomic number. And if you notice, those numbers are in order on the periodic table. And when our periodic table was arranged this way, there are certain properties, certain patterns that follow. And so we'll get more into that as we look at the periodic table. And also in 1913, Niels Bohr came up with what we call the Bohr model. And he said that electrons um, are negative particles, and they're in fixed orbits, kind of like the planets, orbiting around the positively charged nucleus. So that's where we get this picture right here. So you have those negative signs in an orbit around our um, the positive center. Negative yeah. Travel. Travel. Orbits. Yeah. O R. V I. All right. Then the last um, grouping is where we get our modern periodic table here. And in 1926, uh, Schrodinger and Heisenberg came up with the idea that electrons are not in fixed orbits. They're kind of found in an electron cloud that surrounds the nucleus. They're divided into shells, and these shells are based on energy. And electrons actually can move around. They're not fixed. They can bounce between energy shells if they lose or gain energy. And the ones that have the most energy are going to be further away from the nucleus. So that is what um, these fellows said. Was there anything to fill in there? You got it? Um, if you can go quick, I'm going to keep talking though because I can stop the. All right, so. Um, parts of the atom. Parts of the atom are the nucleus, and this is the dense center of the atom. It is going to be made up of protons, and neutrons, And it's going to have a positive charge because of the protons. 
And this is where most of the mass is going to be found. So if you're asked where is the most of the mass of an atom, you're going to answer in the nucleus. All right, so positively charged, center because of the protons, um, and it's where most of the mass is located. Then we have the electron cloud. That's going to be the outside the nucleus, so it's the space surrounding the nucleus. Um, this can be called um, or broken into what you may hear as shells. If you end up taking a chemistry course, you'll learn more about that. Or energy levels. And um, I tend to just call these energy levels. Um, and like I said, when you get into chemistry, you may learn more about um, the term shells in reference there. So electrons that are in the outermost energy level will have, or that are further from the nucleus, have the most energy. Electrons that are outermost energy level of valence electrons. And so if you get to the outermost level, then you have what is called valence electrons. There, uh, that's a term that we're going to use a lot, so it's real important. Valence electrons. Let's have a remote control for that heat. Um, electrons are negatively charged. And if you, um, and they take up the most space, so there's, that's where the volume of an atom is located. Um, we also term these particles subatomic particles, sub meaning below the atom. So there are parts that are smaller than the atom. You've got your proton. This is how we symbolize it, P with a plus. It's going to be positive. It's going to be found in the nucleus. You've got neutron. It is neutral. We um, usually represent it in to the power of zero for neutral, um, is also in the nucleus. Then outside the nucleus in the electron cloud is where we find the electrons. We symbolize that with an E, negative sign. And generally we show them in a fixed orbit even though they are not in a fixed orbit. There's one more not. And there's kind of pointing to it. Notice um, right here, I doubt we'll talk much about it, but they've actually discovered that protons and neutrons are made up of smaller particles known as quarks, Q-U-A-R-K-S. Um, but that's more of an advanced chem chemistry and physics topic, so we don't get much into that. All right, so what's holding these together? We have an attractive force. That's the attraction between the positive nucleus and the electron cloud. So we know like with the magnet, the positive and the negative side attract to each other. And so that's going to be a force that's helping hold atoms together. There's also a repulsive force, the repelling. Electrons, that, uh, because they're negative, they're going to repel each other. And they're going to want to be as far away from each other as possible. That is where we get the volume. And then the protons also want to be as far apart from each other as possible. And that is where the neutrons come into play. Being in the nucleus, um, they help um, add to this large amount of energy that's needed to hold those protons in place. That's why if you have a nucleus that have the same number of protons and neutrons, it's stable. And once those um, protons and neutrons are not the same, the nucleus becomes unstable. So this is kind of our intro to um, the atomic structure. And once you get those notes in, you're going to submit that. And then we have an activity that we're going to do. And you can decide if you want to do that on paper. Sure. 
buttered coffee. Or if you want to do it um, on the, yeah, it on the get a buttered coffee. It must not be in the glass. So let me explain the activity, and then if you want a paper copy, I can print a paper copy for you. You, you have one save changes. Please check your own account. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. 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 There you go. You just, I think, clicked it before it auto saved. All right, does it say done now? No. I'm still thinking? This is the name. Oh. This is the name. Okay, leave it right there for right this moment. Just look up here and then we'll come back to that. Yeah. All right, so back in modules, the only other thing today okay, is going to be um, this activity here. Um, so again, Camden, you can let me know if you want paper or not. It might be easier on paper um, once you see what we're going to do. So you're going to click on this, and I think it opens in another tab when you click on it. Let me see. Uh, yes, it yeah. does. And you're going to get to this right here. And if you look at the paper, which I'm going to go ahead and print a couple copies here. Um, yeah. um, so it says you're going to click on the blue launch button right here, and you're going to launch this. This is what you're going to see, and then you're going to want to have this paper, you're going to want to look at it, and as you read through the different slides, answer these questions. And as you answer them, it's right there in the reading. So if you look, this is pretty much just a set of slides. So this is just saying that chemistry is all about atoms and how they behave and interact. And so in order to understand this, um, we're going to learn more about the parts of the atom. So there's no information from this first page here. So if you click on the next button, and you're looking at question one, you still are not seeing um, anything about movement of particles yet. So it says, follow the directions. Click on the tip of the pencil to begin your tour of the atom. So you're going to do what it says. And you're going to click here. And during our tour of the atom, pay close attention to the properties of particles found inside. So this should look familiar. In our last unit, over here. in our last unit, we saw when atoms are vibrating. Notice our question here is what state of matter is the pencil tip? Well, we all know what state of matter our pencil tip is. Wait. Well, state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas? Solid. solid. Well, this backs it up because remember it is vibrating. So for 1A, you're going to write solid. Then notice that the magnifying, we're magnifying to the atomic level. So we see carbon atoms. So look at this. What element makes up the pencil tip? What did we say here? Carbon. Carbon. Because we know that atoms make up elements. And so now we're going to click on the next. And it says each individual atom is spherical. So you can see it right here. And has fuzzy edges. Um, there doesn't seem to be a distinct beginning and ending points. All right, so that's number two. So you see how I'm going through each slide, and I'm reading it and seeing if there's any 
answers that I need to write down. So I'm going to go through just a little bit more together, and then you're going to work on your own. Try to catch up, would you? So here we even went in even more magnified, and we're seeing an atom here, and we're seeing the electrons moving around. Notice how they're not necessarily staying in the same spot. Now we froze it, so we've stopped it. And so we've stopped all the motion, and so we're going to look at the three particles inside. Notice on your paper, you've got a section for protons, then you'll have a section for neutrons, and on the second page, which is on the back, you have a section for electrons, and then you have a some kind of a review activity. So as you go through, so starting on slide seven here, you're going to start getting information about your protons. So just follow those slide by slide and get your information on so where the paper. Is the atom so it should be right there on that one. And so make sure there's only that one question you need to answer before you go to the next slide. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, once you finish this, if you have makeup work, that is what you're working on.